Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Angela. So I didn't do yesterday my tarot spread little thing I've been doing every week, every Saturday uh, for tarot spreads. So I got a break in the clouds today. It's overcast. It's going to rain again later. It's been raining the last couple of days. Friday, Saturday, today is Sunday. Um, it's going to rain through through Wednesday, even though it's almost July. It's still pretty nice out here for being severely overcast and raining for the last three days. But I thought I would sit out here for a minute while I can do a little spread with you guys. So the spread I found um, is Psychic Abilities. Uh, Emerald Lotus Divination Tarot Spread. Um, I don't know if y'all can see that. Um, can it, does it show? It doesn't show at all. Um, but it's four cards. Um, and I can see, I just, I'm, even with the overcast, I'm like squinting a lot. So that's why I have my glasses on. <laughs> um, but for the first one, it's how I can enhance my psychic abilities. Two is a psychic gift I have. Three is something I should further explore. And four, how can I, how I can learn to follow my intuition. So I figured, you know, everybody needs to know that. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to do, use my Tarot of the Abyss um, by Anatorian I just got yesterday. And then my Oracle of Echo second edition of the Oracle deck that I got in the mail Friday, um, if I need to. There is a nice 10 card spread that goes with this, and I will eventually use that. But this one, I just, I really wanted to do this particular spread with this deck. And right now, I'm currently uploading my week ahead spread I did this morning. Um, but yeah, here we go. So what I normally do is, I don't know if it's bright or low, if I'm, you can even see me. Is that too bright? Um, I'm showing myself as kind of a glow. Um, anyway, let me put my glasses back on because I feel like I'm just doing nothing but squinting into the camera. Um, so what I do, if you're just tuning in, is uh, every week I do a tar different tarot spread with a different, sometimes a different deck. I've done one deck a couple times. Just because I can't put it down, and I got a little mud on that. Smack me now. Um, and I'll do like a little deep breathing meditation real quick before I get into the cards. So here we go. So I'm going to center myself and do a couple little intakes of breathing. Um, I'm going to ask my guide to step forward and work me through this spread. And then we will go from there. Okay, so for card one, we are going to do, I forget what it says. Card one, how I can enhance my psychic abilities. How I can enhance my psychic abilities. That one was trying to fly out. I'm going to scoot you back just a hair set these cards down. So for card two, we have a psychic gift I have. What is a psychic gift I have? Ooh, that one tried to fall out. Okay. Three, something I should further explore. What is something I should further explore? What is something I should further explore? That one was coming out. 
and four, how can how I can learn to follow my intuition? And that is a big one for me because I'm always questioning, is this real? Is what I saw real? How can I learn to follow? And that one tried to just fly out of my hand. Okay, so we got four cards. Let's see what it says. Because I already did my week ahead spread with this deck, and I was with both of these decks, and I was bored. Um, so yeah, it was crazy. So question one: How I can enhance my psychic abilities? How can I enhance my psychic abilities? And it's the Temperance card, and the Temperance card to me is always about balance. If I balance again, head and heart, I've been getting this message pretty much since the end of last year. Um, if you learn to balance head and heart together. Um, great things will come. Great things will manifest into reality. And I love that. Love that. Oh, gosh. Now I'm jumping them still. Okay. So, I hope you guys can see me okay. I feel like you can't, but I'm doing it anyway. Two, a psychic gift I have. So, I'm very intrigued with what this says. A psychic gift I have. And I got the three of swords. Wow. I know what this is. I know what it is. Um, right off the bat, I knew. Um, I could feel it. Feeling it. So I've always said that I've had this um, superpower when I was younger. Um, that I could walk into a room and just know if someone just had an argument or if someone was feeling bad or um, if someone was in pain. Um, I could meet somebody for the first time and know if they had good intentions or not. Um, and this is the one of two of three of swords in this deck. Um, this is the male version of the three of swords. Um, and he's reading a book at the same time that the swords are in the book. <laughs> and I've said recently, um, because I am a medium, and I have said recently that I felt like the dead are wanting me to write their story. Because I'm a writer also. Um, the dead are wanting me to write their story. Um, but this, this card to me isn't about writing the story, which is part of that to me. Um, in this card. This card is about the pain and feeling the pain and, and that's been a big thing for me my whole life is I could feel someone else's, I just know that they're in pain or that they're not a good person or um, I could just know these things and that of course the Three of Swords is about the mind and I just know things that I shouldn't know um, so that makes sense, a total sense so, um, let's see, card three, something I should further explore, something I should further explore, oh my gosh, and I got the nine of wands, um, I, I sat for a second, because I thought this was the nine of swords for a second, um, which makes sense, dear dreams, and that's how my my ability started was with dreams when I was younger. Um, but the Nine of Swords, um, he, <laughs> or Nine of Wands, he looks like he's been through the ringer, right? But he's still going. Um, and maybe my thing to explore is why I keep going through this, this kind of cyclical cycle of pain and endurance, pain and endurance, over and over and over. I, I go through the pain and I just keep going instead of finding a way to break that cycle. Um, so that's very interesting. Very, very, very interesting. So for card four, how I can learn to follow my intuition. And I was, <laughs> and we got the nine of swords. <laughs> I cannot make this up, I swear. <laughs> uh, the nine of swords is all about nightmares. Um, and I have said many times, that's how my, and I just said it, that's how my uh, abilities kind of started is um, the very first experience I can remember I had a dream that someone was going to pass away a male and then a week later on my birthday um, a, a male in my family passed away I've always had dreams that meant I know the difference in, between my dreams that mean something and my dreams that don't the dreams that mean something always wind up coming true or some there's some kind of symbology there um, signifying danger ahead um, or a warning of sorts and um, 
I do take that for granted a lot because I'm like, oh, they'll come when they come. But then they sometimes they don't. Sometimes I'll go weeks with nothing, and then I'm I feel abandoned almost. Um, so I need to explore the dreams when I'm getting them, and find out why I'm having certain dreams when I'm having them. Maybe I should. Uh, and I've been thinking about that lately with the moon cycles. I've noticed when it's a, especially Mer Mercury retrograde, I have constant dreams. And they're always wacky, crazy dreams, wild dreams. But then when, every time there's a new moon, I also have like, a, for a week straight, I'm having like prophetic dreams. Um, and I usually just blow them off. Um, but maybe I need to take a deeper, closer look at those. Um, so that's very interesting. Very interesting. And that's, that's, I must, I've always said, I've always been saying that's also been my gateway to my abilities is my dreams. So uh, maybe I should think about instead of having the nightmares, think about what those nightmares mean and symbolize. Uh, so that's very interesting. So that's it for the spread. I'm going to go ahead and pull a card from this deck just to see, give us an overall energy of what this, any, any other... Any, is there, and look at the backs of this. I mean, come on. Gorgeous. Every time I look at it, and this is the extra card. So beautiful. So beautiful. I love all, both of these decks. They're just gorgeous. And I have the first edition of the Oracle of Echoes, but they're both beautiful. <laughs> um, any other information I can glean from this? I was going to try to fly out from this spread. Oh, and there's another one. Let's see what these two cards have to say. Are you kidding me? God speaks. And I feel like this is speaking about the the dreams is like there's this other entity, this other spirit god whatever you want to call it trying to get through to your dreams but you're turning them into nightmares and you're not paying attention to what's being said in the dreams so that makes a lot of sense and then <laughs> shadow self work on that shadow work on that that part of you that is broken um and that's what i feel like these are also saying um as well um find your balance uh find the part of you that's broken and fix it and continue on don't let it break you um wow that's very in interesting i love these two together already i've used them twice and i'm like they're fantastic together um but what i'm going to do right now is go ahead and read um what the book says on the tarot cards because i found it interesting that she does give you imagery information on the images so i found that mind-blowing yesterday so let's go ahead and go to the temperance card. If I can find it. Temperance. Two elemental cups hold the key to inner balance. Its flame, its flames dancing and intertwining with the element of water, bringing the second cup together through their fluid movements and acceptance of each other. They form the perfect balance. My husband just pulled in, sorry. Of opposing forces. Fire is that inner creative drive that ignites us to move and act. Water is our emotions, is sometimes turbulent, full of power to create or destroy. However, when brought together in the perfect blend of balance and harmony, they bring about stability, much as the forging and formation of new land when molten lava collides with the cool sea. The presence of the temperance card in your spread is a call to moderation and harmonious relationships. If your reading this is especially active in terms of events, this card urges you to not take not urges you to urges you not to take extreme action, but rather to take your time and not rush. Be calm and centered as the eye of the storm ponder your responses. Certain situations may require you to compromise in order to reach a resolution. Don't allow yourself to be provoked. Losing your temper will only push the process further from the balance and stability you seek. Wow. That was, that's interesting. Why do I keep dropping these cards? Okay. That's very interesting. And we got ants now showing up. So let's go to the three of swords and I turned right to it. Oh, wait. 
This is the alternate card. Now this is the traditional one. And then there's a different one. Three is, uh, there's nothing harder than losing someone we love. Sometimes the pain can seem enough to break the human spirit. The Three of Swords is not an easy card to receive because pain it can because it can forecast emotional pain and suffering. In the card, we see a woman ready to set free. Oh, that is a different one. So that's the. I thought this was the first one. Uh, but, uh, okay, so let me read this one. This is the alternate, I guess. I thought the other one was the alternate, but it's not. Some people have a different way of interpreting the Three of Swords based on the numeral, uh, numerological properties of the number three, the triad. Because the suit of swords deals with the element of error and therefore the mind, the suit is a whole, can be interpreted as a progression from unknowing to knowing. Hmm. Since the ace of swords associated with number... One, also known as the mon monad, is a card that brings the discovery of truth. The number one is the creative big bang of the mind. Wow. The two of swords associated with the number two, the dyad, is all about the duality and the choices of the mind. We're, we've now reached the number three, the triad. Very interesting read. And the three of swords, where what we've learned from the ace of swords, one equals truth and creativity, Combined with the Two of Swords, two equals the ability to make choices and proper discernment. Um, brings us to the growth and expansion of the mind through multiplicity, new ways of thinking and seeing things. It calls for harmony and equilibrium between the two forces that once were opposing. And again, we have this balance. Uh, crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, <laughs> for this reason, the card portrays the image of a young man in the midst of gaining knowledge. Three swords stand upright, piercing the book of thought, unlocking the living knowledge as it flies off the pages. Wow. And this was the card that was, what is my psychic ability? So I thought that, they think that's pretty cool. They take flight and enter the receptive grail of the mind, a fertile ground where they see their seeds can germinate and develop fully if properly tended to so the seeds are flying off they're like little birds and going into his mind that's cool as hell right there wow so nine of wands trying to write to it can't make this up the wounded warrior pictured in the card has seen the worst life has to offer. His head is bandaged and his arm is wrapped in a makeshift sling. He leans on his staff as a crutch. He is left alone and is suffering. His eyes are weary and mistrustful. He has spent too much time in the dark and yearns once more to feel the healing light on his face. Even so, though he may be battle-worn and bone-weary, he is still alive and if he can just find a bit of respite, he will emerge stronger and smarter and all the wiser for his troubles. The Knight of Wands is a card of defense. Are you guarding yourself? If you've been hurt in the past, it makes sense that you've been more suspicious and want to protect yourself. Old wounds are not yet healed physically or phys psychologically. You could be recovering from an illness or some experience that has left you feeling depleted and even a little depressed. True. As the saying goes, however, half the world's ills are cured by activity, the other half by rest. Now is the time for the latter. Seek resiliency and respite and relaxation. You will emerge the stronger for it. Love that. Love it, love it, love it, love it. And then we have the Nine, um, nine of Swords. And that was in the beginning. This is a card of nightmares and unfounded fears. We all have been there struggling to deal with anxieties that bubble up unrelentingly from our subconscious. Our nightmares can leave us so terrified that we are afraid to go back to sleep. Even worse, we may actually start to believe that there is some truth to them. Is it a warning, perhaps? The Nine of Swords depicts this, that moment when we are imprisoned when a, within a dream world, a world so vivid that we actually believe it is real. Yet we all know that the woman will awaken and realize that it was simply a bad dream. 
She is no longer, she is in no real danger, and she still has ample opportunity to shape her reality in the here and now. So that's more like talking about manifestation, too. So that's interesting for how can I further my intuition. Because I have done quite a bit of accidental manifesting. <laughs> Are you feeling worried or overwhelmed? Drawing the Nine of Swords tells you that you're making yourself sick with worry, which is true. Your thoughts are whirling around and around, provoking anxiety and destroying your or your resting hours. While the Three of Swords, that's interesting because I pulled the Three of Swords in this same spread, and it's talking about the Three of Swords now and the Nine of Swords. Okay, I got to go back. So while the Three of Swords represents external sorrow, the Nine of Swords speaks to internal despair. Imagining the worst is not the way to go. Our fears are often, very often unfounded, and even if they have basis in reality, worry and anxiety only compound the situation, making a solution more elusive. Seek stillness. I've been getting that too a lot. Seek stillness. Discover your inner peace through prayer and meditation and take one moment at a time. And I think it's great that they, she added multi meditation in there because I've been needing to meditate more lately. I haven't been. Um, but I find it interesting that those two are kind of tied together in the book. Um, and number two was the a psychic gift I have, which is the Three of Swords. And then how can I learn from to follow my intuition was the Nine of Swords. And they're tied together in that sense in the book. So that's very interesting. Very, very interesting. I'll have to contemplate on that more. But that was my tarot spread for this week. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, don't hesitate to comment below. If you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more, please subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification button so you're alerted to any future videos. And you guys have a great day. I just got to find, get rid of it. Have a great day. Bye.